This episode of the Eskimo Empire podcast is brought to you by TELUS World of Science Edmonton, home of the Canadian debut of Marvel Universe of Superheroes. We're into the last month as the exhibition runs until February 17th, and Edmonton is the first and so far only Canadian city to host it. Of course, this features more than 300 artifacts, costumes, props, and interactive elements to bring some of the Marvel Universe right into your world. Uh, travel through the mysterious mirror dimension of Doctor Strange, digitally transform into Iron Man, and pose for selfies with Black Panther, Spider-Man, and other iconic Marvel characters. Make sure that you check this out before it leaves Edmonton. Again, that is on February the 17th. And if you want to get some tickets, you can check it out at TELUS World of Science Edmonton dot ca that's tell us world of science edmonton dot ca enjoy the show hey fellas we ain't gonna ever back down from nobody i don't care who it is this is a brotherhood and if we stand strong together we can't be denied if one of us go down we have another and another and another that's ready to fight so let's hit this field and bang him, bang him, bang him. Somebody light me up. Welcome to the Empire. It's the Eskimo Empire podcast. This is Trevor Harris. Hey, how you doing? This is number 58, Travis Bond. This is Christoph Malamba Chimanga. Hey there, this is your co-host, Kenny Stafford. Hey, this is Ryan King. And Calvin McCarty. And you are listening to... You're listening to the Eskimos Empire. You're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. The Eskimo Empire Podcast. Hope you guys enjoy listening. Welcome back to the Turf District for the Eskimo Empire podcast, and we are a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. This is a SP episode we are bringing you, and we're kind of getting a double shot in this week as we get ready for West of Us this coming Saturday. That's January 25th. Uh, West of Us will be at First Round Downtown, so that's on 104th Ave and about 112th Street. Uh, we're going to get together right around 5 o'clock, talk lots of football, and we've now got lots of stuff to talk about as we have a little more information on who our new coaches are. This particular episode, we're going to meet up with some of those coaches. Uh, I got a chance to sit down with uh, Brock, with Scott, uh, AJ, and with our new DC, Noel Thorpe. So I wanted to bring those to you so you had a chance to kind of know these guys and what they have coming for you this coming season. So let's go through these four interviews, and uh, and then, of course, we'll uh, catch up with you after those. I'm joined by uh, GM of the Eskimos, Brock Sunderland. How's the uh, offseason been so far? It's been busy obviously just getting Scott hired and then we're still the staff is pretty much finalized but we have a couple more coaches that we're in discussions with so it's been busy on that front and uh, that's held up the you know a little bit of re-signing some of our guys just because of new staff I want them to evaluate our players just to make sure that we're seeing things eye for eye you know I don't want to vice versa I don't want to let anybody go that they love or you know, right. sign somebody with a, a big signing bonus or something like that that they necessarily don't think is going to fit what they do. So okay. uh, we're in the process of all that stuff this week. So it's, it's been busy. Awesome. Well, now we, we'll get to the players in a second, but mm-hmm. um, tell me again, because I, I've already told you there, I thought uh, I thought you knocked it out of the park, got the, the miracle pick in getting <laughs> Scott here. Um, tell us a little bit about how that kind of played out and, and what the first impressions were. Yeah, very happy about it, obviously, and, and how it played out is Scott and I go way back. We, we worked together briefly in Montreal in 07, about maybe six, seven months before I went to the Jets, right. and hit it off and kept in touch through the years. Even when I was in New York and he was still in Montreal, I'd go up um, to a game or two a year at least in Montreal because I was close, and we'd catch up and BS a little bit. and um, Never like long extended conversations, but a quick text here and there, hey, congrats, or all the above. Okay. Obviously, when I went back to the uh, CFL and went to Ottawa, he was in Toronto. Right. So uh, we had that connection. We'd see each other frequently as division rivals, and then scouting all star games, we'd bump into each other and, you know, just have that relationship where we knew each other, had a lot of respect for each other, and, um, at least all sad, respect for him. Hopefully, the fame <laughs> is mutual. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we, we've. We've had that connection, and even when he is in Jacksonville, I text them, you know, hey, big win, vice versa. So there's been a connection, and um, 
you know, I was curious if he would ever, you know, he was always at the top of my list, just knowing what he'd done in Toronto, having worked with him and knowing him as a person, knowing it would fit. You know, I think we, we have the same approach and the same thought process on a lot of things. He's had success. He's a proven winner. Um, obviously, his ability to develop quarterbacks and get the most out of them is extremely appealing. So all those things. So for me, it was I'm going to get permission from Jacksonville. And the, the first thing I asked him is, is this something that you really want to do? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he was like, yeah, it actually it is. And I said, wow. And so the longer we spoke on the phone, I'd say maybe 15, 20 minutes on the phone, I was like, I need to, I need to come sit with you. We need to, you know, chat and really roll our sleeves up and, and make sure we're on the same page and have the discussions about the big topics and all those things. And once we started talking, um, I, I told you before we got on air here that, you know, seeing where he was living down there and, <laughs> and, and yeah, beautiful <laughs> golf course and all those things, you know, my mind was there's, there's no way he's going to want to leave the NFL. But, you know, as we started speaking, you know, career ambitions and goals and those things, uh, it, it just worked out well timing wise. So, you know, it wasn't long of, of talking with him in the quote. Inter- I say interview. We were in his his back patio. Just <laughs> it's a nice chatting. little interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, it was it was more casual because I know him. It, I didn't have to say, "What's your approach on this?" He's a proven winner in this league, and not that long ago. So those things weren't really things we had to go over. It was just, "Hey, what's what's your philosophy, and, and how do you want to run things, and how do we see each other's roles, and how are we going to work together?" And, I'd say about an hour in, in my mind, it was a no-brainer. I think the bigger thing was, is you know, a is this really what you want to do? You know, um, yeah, it's it's a different step for him, right? Yeah, coming from no question. NFL to CFL for yeah, him, yeah, you know, is it what you want to do? Is, you know, personally, is you know, he had his discussions with his family and everything. And then the big thing was, you know, are they, you know, are they? Jacksonville said yes, you can speak to him, but are they going to really be open to it? Because he was under contract for next year too. Oh, okay. So okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there was there was some steps we had to take, and you know, as we kind of went through each one, you know, I was getting more and more excited. So it worked out, and couldn't be more excited about having him here with us. Awesome. And today, you now you announced the rest of the coaching staff mm-hmm. um, for so the most part. There's a couple but, more, it, right? Yeah, couple. There's going to be two or three more guys. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Mm-hmm. But. Um, some familiar names coming back with AJ, which uh, as, as a fan of his for a long time, I'm right. very excited about that. Um, Demetrius Maxey as well. Um, did you, and I know you said it was all kind of Scott's call, but um, did you get a chance to kind of have a conversation with him beforehand with some of these guys before he met them and, and then just let him make the decision from there? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the guys that are, that are here and even some coaches that, that aren't here, he asked my thoughts and, you know, the, gave him my candid thoughts and, all positive and, and all those things. So, yeah, we, we spoke, and um, I gave him my two cents, but ultimately it was his call. And I said, hey, these are my thoughts. This is, you know, how I view these guys. But, it you know, it's going to be his call all the way as it should be with his staff. So, um, you know, when he retained those guys, he called me and said, hey, yeah, you know, I see it exactly the same and, you know, thought it would be a good fit. Nice, yeah. nice. So now you get to the process. Like you said, you, you've got some coaches in place. You can start talking to some players and saying, okay, these are the guys that are going to be here. Is that Does that make it a lot easier when you're having those conversations or is it pretty much the same no matter whether you know the coaching or not? Yeah, I think so. For us, it's more the conversations with the players isn't necessarily different because with them it's more about – contract numbers and term right that's more or less the same the biggest thing is just letting the new staff watch our team and just making sure i get their insight of what they think right. you know ultimately signing the players is my final call but it doesn't make sense if if i love a player and i want him and, and he's not going to fit what they do then it doesn't make sense so this week has been a big a big portion of time is all these guys watching the film and and then we'll talk at the end of the day and make sure that we see eye to eye on who the players are, how they fit with what we're going to do going forward, and then that's going to help me with you know hopefully retaining the guys that we want to retain. Awesome, and you've already signed a couple with uh, Shaq Cooper and mm-hmm. Brian Walker coming right. back. Um, great pickups. I, w- I was really impressed with Walker and what he did last year. Kind of came out of nowhere and mm-hmm. was playing in a number of different positions. So it's nice to have that guy that's kind of a gadget guy. But I remember when we when you first signed Shaq Cooper and we talked about you had seen that video from a friend on a mm-hmm. phone and like yeah we got to get him up here. Yeah, and hoping he gets a little bit of an expanded role this year. Is that kind of where the conversation was with him, or is it more just he was happy here? Or? Yeah, I mean, he, he likes it here. We like him, obviously. So uh, the role will be uh, to be determined depending on how competition goes to training camp. But 
you know, how we approach everything is obviously your incumbents are going to have the first chance to be a starter, but nothing's promised, nothing's guaranteed, but it's an open slate and we're going to play the best players. So, you know, he's somebody that coming into this, it's year three now, and um, he's going to have every opportunity to, to claim a starting spot, not guaranteed, but he's going to be able to compete for that and uh, the best person will win. Awesome. Now, without any names or anything, have you been shown any other videos that uh, are in piquing your interest? Over the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we always, you know, we're always getting film, and we get stuff emailed to us all the time, and you know, consistent communication with agents. And we've got there's two all-star games going on right now. We have scouts at all those. We have four people out scouting for us right now. So I'm getting feedback daily from those guys and what they're seeing with negative rec- recommendations and Thanks. all the above. So and then we're projecting for free agency. We have some players that we're earmarking that we think may be potential cap casualties at other teams and okay. you know, if they do hit the market then you know what's the value compared to what we have here so it's it's pretty fluid right now and I think that's the case for for all the teams uh, for us again and, and teams making head coaching changes it, it it's a different approach a little bit and for us the timing was a little off only because Scott had to finish his responsibilities oh, yeah. with Jacksonville so um, we're a little later in the process simply due to that but uh, I think he's well worth the wait Awesome. I totally agree. <laughs> and uh, congratulations on putting everybody together. I think it's going to be very exciting. We're happy to, or I'm very excited to see what you do in the next uh, few weeks here as we get into free agency, especially as we remember last year. Right. Well, I appreciate <laughs> it. We're excited. And, uh, you know, the motto is uh, every rock, every day. We're going to try to find the best players, best coaches, and all the above uh, at all times. Awesome. Appreciate it. Joined now by our new head coach, Scott Milanovic. Welcome to Edmonton. Thanks. It's great to be here. Yeah. Are, are you sure? It's freezing outside. It's a little chilly. I'm spending most of my time indoors at this point, but yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be here. You come from Jacksonville. It's like it's like a 65 degree difference just to come back here. And I would like, think at least at this point, but yeah. 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 Uh, it's, uh, I come from the north a little bit, so I'm not, uh, I'm not too out of place. It's not too bad. Okay, good. Well, tell us a little bit about your decision to come to Edmonton and uh, lead the team this year. Yeah, it, um, it started with Brock reaching out. Um, and uh, I really hadn't thought about it. And um, he came down to visit me in Florida. We talked about it. Started to get a little more excited. Started thinking about the history here, uh, the facilities, the backing, all the infrastructure, all the support, the things that go into behind the scenes having success that, that this organization has. And then you take into account our roster and guys like Trevor Harris that I have history with. So um, I got excited. I think we got a chance. Uh, uh, it's not a rebuild. It's a, it's a it's a situation where I think we can win. So uh, I, I was excited, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Tell, tell us a little bit about that relationship with Trevor, because you were the one that actually brought him up to the CFL to start. As I as I I was sure. among one of the guys. Yeah, yeah I worked Trevor out uh, in a high school gym one winter, and uh, <laughs> you know he, he he was patient. He he sat behind Ricky and then sat behind Zach, and finally got his opportunity and. And everybody knows he, what he did with it. He threw 30-some touchdown passes when Ricky was injured and yeah. went on to Ottawa. He's, uh, you know, one of the best people I know. He's uh, unassuming. He's uh, a good person. He cares about the team more than he cares about Trevor Harris. All those things, I think, uh, help your football team. When, when, you're, uh, when your best player or one of your best players, your quarterback, is uh, – as a team guy. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure. So now, tell us, you have that conversation with Brock, mm-hmm. and then you go and you, you sit down with your family and you say, mm-hmm. so here's what we're thinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, how did that all kind of go over and, and, and coming up here? Yeah, it's, um, coaching in general is difficult on a family. Mm-hmm. And so, um, it was something that we had to discuss. It was it was one of the sticking points. Chris Preston also came down, and, and it was going to have to be a scenario where um, we made it work for my family as well, not just yeah. for me. And I have a daughter that's got a year left in high school, and um, okay. anyway that has teenage daughters, no, you're you're not going to pull them out of high school. So I'm well aware. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, the next year will be a little bit difficult, but that's what I've done in the past also in this league has kind of been been back and forth. So I'll be back and forth in the off season. Obviously, during the season, I'll be there full time and 
they had to agree to to travel and to come see me in the summer <laughs> and then coming up for a couple of weeks in the fall and so those are important things anytime anytime you have a family to make sure that uh, that they're happy too yeah absolutely so tell us a little bit about some of the relationships with the coaches that you've brought in now so you obviously got some carryovers for us which is great and AJ Gass and Demetrius Maxey um, and yet and some new guys as Noel Thorpe and, mm-hmm. and those guys coming in and kind of how did that all come together or how was yeah. that for you uh, it was difficult because I was still working in Jacksonville. I bet. No, yeah. no was was easy. I knew no um, didn't need to in- interview no. So when he okay. agreed to come on, that helped. Yeah. Because then he could work from his end and help me uh, kind of put the staff together because I was still working long hours. Um, okay. Uh, I talked to a lot of people that I trust in this league. Um, knew some guys that are no longer in this league to talk about other coaches and their experiences with them. Um, and uh, that along with Noel and talking to guys on the phone, that's kind of how we did it for the most part, okay. uh, at least for the key positions. Yeah, great. Well, I think um, I think one of the things that I, I, I really respected you said this in the scrum is that um, you're, you're also very good friends with, mm-hmm. with Jason Moss. Yeah. And um, he was a very well-respected coach mm-hmm. here. Um, and I think that that... So that helps somewhat is that you un- you already understand where he's coming from and his background. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you feel that'll be helpful as you go into the locker room? Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to be me. Uh, yeah. And I know Jason's always <laughs> going to be Jason. So, um, you know, I, I, I've had some success in this league, but you have to reprove that every year. And it's the same way with the players. And anytime you just feel like you can walk in and command respect, I think you're looking at it the wrong way. Uh, um, Hopefully, I'll earn their trust and, and earn it relatively quickly through work ethic and preparation and just how we do things. But um, it always takes a little bit of time. Awesome. Well, we're so glad you are here. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions just outside of football. What, what do you like to do when you're not doing football? Because you're doing a lot of football yeah. right now. <laughs> I basically have two hobbies, and that's uh, I, I like to hunt when I'm up north. That was okay. from my from my childhood, and when I'm in Florida, I like to golf. So. All I've right. got kind of a wide range of, of cold and warm weather uh, <laughs> wide uh, wide things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What kind of what kind of food do you like to eat? Uh, too much. Uh, <laughs> everything. Uh, I'm not real picky. I'm not real picky. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite movie or something you like to watch to when, to kind of relax, or is it mostly film? <laughs> no, it's. Um, I don't get to watch a lot of movies anymore. Usually, like in the season, if we have a day off or something, I usually try to find some sort of uh, mindless comedy <laughs> where that I've already seen ten times, like a like an old school or something like nice. that, to where you can kind because of, your mind drifts, right? When you're a coach, you don't really watch anything like a normal person when you're thinking about what you're going to do on second eight. And so it needs to be something where I can zone out for 20 minutes and then pick back up and know what's going on. Perfect. <laughs> That's great. Um, well, we're like I said, we're excited to have you here, and uh, best of luck this season, and hopefully we'll chat with you more as the season goes on. Thanks a lot. I was really happy that I did get a chance to get to the media luncheon and get a chance to catch up with these guys. As you heard from Brock and Scott, uh, some big plans coming up. And uh, it's nice to hear that uh, excitement. And of course, all of us as fans are getting into our, our hopeful and excited stage as, as we get through with the new coaches and then, of course, transforming into new players. I'm really excited to see what Brock will bring in as far as uh, free agency goes and uh, who he gets to bring back as far as some of these guys that we really like. So lots of exciting things to come. Uh, This show is also brought to you by Taproot Edmonton, your source for curiosity-driven coverage of our city cultivated right by the community. Uh, Taproot publishes weekly roundups on a variety of topics, including media, food, tech, health innovation, arts, music, uh, they just tons of stuff there. Taproot's curators gather up the headlines and happenings on these certain things and then deliver them straight to your inbox. Uh, you can get one or two of them for free, uh, but if you want more, become a Taproot member. Then you can get just as many as you want, and, and there's a few other perks as well, uh, for just $10 a month or $100 a year. You can get informed at taprootedmonton.ca. Make sure you check those out. 
Uh, let's get back to a couple more interviews. Now I'm going to catch up with Noel Thorpe, and then we'll finish the show with, uh, of course, one of our faves, A.J. Gass. Uh, we're joined by the uh, defense, new defensive coordinator of the Edmonton Eskimos, Noel Thorpe. Welcome back to the Green and Gold, as it would be. Yeah. Uh, and we were just talking about kind of how easy it is to be back in it is. Edmonton. And we're yeah. talking about the cold and, and yes. the familiarity yes. and whatnot. The one thing that is a little bit different is the facilities. Now, when I coached here, they were just building it. And they, okay, they, yeah. they, were, they were doing the renovations and the, the extensions onto the... the um, Commonwealth Stadium there, and yeah. um, you know th- that was something I hadn't seen in the past. I got a first-hand look at it. It's outstanding. I mean, second to none in the league. Uh, they have outstanding facilities. They got great people in the building. I've, it was it was some people me, uh, welcomed me with open arms um, that I hadn't seen for some time. But um, it's a great organization. The quality of people. Um, here and, and the character of people here, uh, it's just uh, feel very fortunate to be back. That's awesome. No, yeah, I guess walking into the field house, it's a little different than when you were here the last. It was. There wasn't an indoor. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was. You know, it was uh, an older facility. Um, our offices were across way past the parking lot in the back there where the ticket office is. Yep. Um, so that that has changed. Um, you know, that balcony and all that structure has changed. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this is. Um, this this type of place and facility attracts people and attracts players. You, know, you got the opportunity to keep them maybe year round. You got an uh, indoor practice facility. Uh, the weight room is outstanding. The the when you look at the the training facility, the locker room, uh, you know it's it's second to none in this league. Yeah, and Dwayne's still here, so you and got Dwayne, the, you know, like nothing's changed there. Yeah. <laughs> nothing's which changed. Is, yeah. is great. So you've gone through for people who may not know, you were a special teams coordinator here before. Yeah. Um, and you've obviously been defensive coach, coordinator. Yeah. yeah, I was the assistant head coach, uh, special teams, and I coached the defensive backs when I was here. Three right. years, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you've been in Montreal. You were the defensive coordinator there. You've been in Ottawa as the defensive coordinator. Yes. Um, tell us, that's that's a, a big learning process over going all these different places and dealing with different players and yeah. things like that. Do you find it still kind of the same, or is it do you like every year, oh, I get to add something new? Or well, what? you're always trying to add something new mm-hmm. um, or new again because right. things that get recycled and forgotten about and come back to the table and they can be effective. But, you know, I've been fortunate in my coaching career. Uh, um, I've, I've been in coaching for a while. We haven't gone to too many places um, yeah. because, you know, this this lifestyle can be a little bit transient <laughs> and moving. So I've yeah. been fortunate that way. Spent uh, 11 years total in Montreal, uh, the last two in, in Ottawa. And, and I'm back in a place that I spent three years. So, you know, I've, I had two stints in Montreal, and now it's two stints in, in Edmonton. Um, but, no, to get back to what, you, what you're asking as far as that, you, you, you come with a template. Yeah. Um, you develop a certain you know, defensive style and philosophy. That's one that, uh, you know, I coached with Don Matthews. He hired me in 2002. Yeah. Coached on defense and special teams. Um, at the time, he was a winningest coach in the CFL before yeah. Wally overtook him. Um, he mentored me. Okay. His leadership and guidance um, was invaluable. Yeah. And uh, he really shaped me as a coach. So, you know, I owe a lot to him. But it really... Um, taught me the lens that I need to see this game through and you're always looking and evolving and uh, looking to get better uh, developing new strategies not just the X's and O's but also teaching yeah. how you can teach um, it's the, a huge the, part of coaching yeah, isn't it the players, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you know how you can find ways to, to tap in and keep them engaged yeah um, in a world that's moving so fast and uh, keeping their focus and you know it all comes down to the ability to do their job and execute on the field in, in, in a timely manner yeah. and end under pressure and so yeah you're always looking to improve not only what the product is on the field how you can improve as a, as a coach as a leader as a teacher right yeah and and I guess that's the biggest thing that people don't remember is that when part of coaching is is teaching and figuring out okay this guy likes to learn this way and this guy likes to learn this way and if you're not getting there, then you're not going to get the yeah, best out of them. So it's a huge deal to have that longevity as a coach because you have to be a good teacher. That's right. You find new ways um, to, to, 
to teach and instruct and um, for players to absorb the information. Yeah. And it's it's not always about what you know, it's about what they need to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so you've got to, it's, it, this is one where you, you got to check your angle at the door and there's some things that have worked for different people. you got you got to try something different with another player, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that but that's part of the challenge. That's actually, I think, what the, that I enjoy doing okay. know, is the teaching part. Yeah. Where I feel that, uh, yes, I'm a coach, um, but I'm also a teacher. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that Eskimo fans are excited about having you join in is that we know you have that aggressive style of defense. Right. Um, now, is that coming a lot from Don, or is that part of your going, hey, is. I love aggressive, aggression? Yeah, but, the, like, you know, yeah. before Don and I worked together, that was that was part of the package that we had. That's just, you know, that's a bit of a mindset, probably <laughs> some of the characteristics and personality trait of, of, of who I am. Um, and that's something that is, is carried over. Now, uh, you know, working with Don, obviously, uh, philosophically, uh, different X's and O's, what we're going to do schematically, mm-hmm. um, brought a lot to the table that way. So I've taken that and what we did. Uh, we've had to evolve and adapt as the game has changed because offenses are attacking you in different ways. And But it was it was a, a big part of it. So, you know, we're, we're going to be a defense that likes to put pressure on the offense, whether it's quarterback or attacking protections. Um, Planning coverage, being as disruptive as we possibly can. As I said earlier, you know, the being able to take the ball away because mm-hmm. the teams with the turnover margin, it's all, it's all about being able to have ball security and be able to take the ball away. The ones that have the largest turnover margins are usually the ones that are taking the ball away most, so the ones that are having success. Yeah, absolutely. So now, you've been playing in Montreal and Ottawa yeah. the last couple of years. You've seen the Eskimos' defense. What kind of things jump out at you? Is like this is exciting. Well, I think they're I think their front is a front that likes to get after the quarterback. They've, Absolutely. Yeah, they based our, our, around, um, you know, they were able to get pressure with a four-man rush. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, so that in this league, um, being able to play coverage, drop eight in the coverage and, and get pressure without blitzing mm-hmm. is something that uh, is, is a huge asset. So um, when you look up front, that's probably been the strength of their defense over the last few years. And, um, you know, I'm excited about working with their back end and the secondary because that's what I'm the secondary coach first and uh, and how we can marry what we do up front with mm-hmm. what we do in the back end. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, last thing I just wanted to ask you, you or I guess catch up on is that you knew you've known Scott yeah. for a long time. Sure. Um, was that a, was that part of it making it so easy to come back? Much I, on top of it being Edmonton, yeah, is it just like it hey, was, I I want to work with you without question. You know, yeah. we first coached together in two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. We've stayed uh, in contact all the way through. I mean, since oh seven. <laughs> whether you know when he I, I I moved on to Edmonton, he stayed in Montreal, became an offensive coordinator. I've seen him ascend through the coaching ranks, offensive coordinator, head coach in Toronto. Um, I've won great cups in Toronto. Uh, we, we went against each other when I was a defensive coordinator in Montreal. We faced each other two, three, sometimes four times a year. Yeah. The, the respect level I have for him, not only as a coach, but as a leader, and um, in the relationship that we've, we've continued to have. So I, it was, you know, it was for, for me an easy decision to come. It was one that uh, I felt fortunate to have. Uh, it was another great opportunity to be reunited with him and, and, and work with him. So this is it all came together and it's a great fit. Awesome. Well, we're really glad to have you here and hope your your family is happy to come here even though it's freezing cold. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and we promise it'll get better in the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> we look forward to chatting with you yeah. more throughout the season. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right, we are joined by returning special teams coordinator yep. AJ Gas. Uh, welcome back, man. No, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good no, to be back. We're we're so glad. Uh, obviously, uh, some of us in particular who still have your jersey that needs signing is very <laughs> are very excited that you are back. Um, tell us a little bit about the process here in the off season and getting to meet Scott and and then joining the team again. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, anytime a season ends and then there's a change with a coaching, uh, a head coaching position, everybody else below is kind of on pins and needles trying to figure out, you know, what do you do? One of the worst parts about it is right before Christmas, you know, so (laughs) you have all of these things stacking up and, uh, you know, Scott and I talked, you know, soon after he got hired and, and 
you know, he understands the importance of special teams and how much it means in this league. And he also understands the importance about things being familiar. And, um, you know, our conversation went really well. Uh, you know, when I, when I got the offer, it was a no brainer. Uh, I was all about it. I think that, uh, we laid a pretty solid foundation last year. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, um, we're going to have to take a good step forward to, to achieve all of our goals. You know, we knocked a few of them, a few of them off the list, but there's right. some things that we need to figure out. There's some things we need to get better at. Um, and the, the best part about it is, is I think we have a core group of guys who are going to be able to get that done. That's awesome. And, and I guess the other part of it is, is that, like you said, there's that little bit of familiarity with some of the players. If we, if and again, one of the things you had to deal with last year is a ton of injuries that right. kind of kept switching up your special teams all the time. No doubt. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully with a little bit of consistency in voice, but also in players, then that actually helps that along. I would hope. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm the type of person that, that looks around and observes, um, looking around the league when you when you see those those teams that are, are at the top of the special teams categories, mm -hmm. not only has their, their coach been established for a while, um, but the players, there's a nucleus of players that are, that are involved. And right. It's those guys that, that you build around that allow you to overcome injuries. Yeah. You know, because your core is so strong. I think we started to develop that last year. Um, but anytime you go through a season and you have five returners, you know, your return game is going to suffer a little bit, right? Yeah. I don't think people understand that uh, injuries really plagued us at that position. Mm -hmm. um, not not only does your returner change, but the next guy in, you have to kind of change your style to fit their style of return. So right. not every return guy is the same, so blocks need to be different, uh, angles need to be different. Um, and then when you start injury, losing guys, your blockers to injury, <laughs> then all of a sudden, you know, the thing became a mess at times. The, the fortunate thing is, is we, we never were unprepared. Our guys were always attentive in meetings. They, they, um, they understood the scheme. Um, but again, special teams are about reps and, and getting things um, familiar, getting things to be um, to gel smoothly with the guy next to you, plus the returner. So all of these things played a role, and we had some hiccups last year mm -hmm. in all three of those phases, and that's kind of that's kind of why we fell short on a few. Um, okay. But but again, I think. But it was really developing with Christian Jones. Like I really felt Absolutely. like there was, we were so close. Like we, we, I was, we were. Uh, <laughs> I figured it was almost we there, right? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we uh, uh, we we did some really good things with Christian. He he made us look really good at times. Mm -hmm. um, so getting him back, getting him healthy. Um, we know what to expect out of his style. He knows what to expect out of our, our blocks. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get that, you know, big things do happen. And, and we are hunting for big things this year. <laughs> awesome. So you know, now that you've had, like, your first kind of year under your belt on, yep. at professional level coming up from high school and, and, mm -hmm. and college, how does it feel? What, does it feel any different? Do you feel more confident going into year two, or, or how does that go for you? No, oh, I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't feel way more confident heading into this year. You know, coming back last year, not only was there a uh, kind of having to change the way you deal with players, mm -hmm. um, there's also who's in the league and where are they at and what's the style of the coordinators and those teams, you know. Right. So learning personnel across the league last year was big for me. Okay. Um, learning our guys was big for me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, I think I have a good feel for what the strengths of our guys are. Um, I have a really good feel for what the strengths of the teams that we play are okay. and, and those coordinators at the, on those teams. So um, moving forward this year, I think there's going to be a uh, it's going to be a really fun year that we can have, you know, a, a little bit more fun doing some exciting things rather than Ooh. just kind of being a little bit more safe and sound. We'll, you know, we're going to be good enough this year to, to let – you know, let some things hang out and have fun with it. <laughs> well, and now as part of the coaching staff, you have probably one of the last great returners we had here in Winston October. Yep, so absolutely. is he going to try and pick his brain to say, hey, how do, how do we do this? You know, <laughs> I just had that conversation right now over lunch. It was, uh, I told him, I said, I need you to take care of our returners. You yeah. Know, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to block and you're going to get the returners to yeah, run. And like, together like, we're going to get this thing back the way it was when we played oh that's because you know? i remember blocking exciting. for yeah. winston and i yeah. remember you know 
I remember how uh, the mentality was is everybody who blocked for a guy like Winston, a guy like Giz, you wanted so badly to, to get him in the end zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the reason we did was because of the way we understood that the return was going to sell out for us. Yeah. So it, it's a two-way street, man. You can't do it by yourself. Yeah. Any good return will tell you it requires everybody else on the field. And uh, I think together, when we get that message across to the team, uh, it's just going to pay big-time dividends. That's awesome. All right. Well, now let's 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 ask a little more fun questions. Sure. Did you have a, a decent holiday season? Are you having? Or did you stay at Edmonton? Uh, yeah. Post uh, post season and all those types of things. Yeah, yeah. So I live. We moved back here, so I'm I'm a Excellent. resident here now. And re- um, today you're regretting it because it's so cold. Geez, but <laughs> starting a couple days ago, oh my gosh, like, why do I live here? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it was, it you're not brutal. alone. <laughs> it was brutal. Um, but we went up to Banff. You know, nice. took the family skiing. Uh, had a had an awesome Christmas. Uh, down in Calgary with her family and uh, with my wife's family and now we're here and it's football time and it's exciting <laughs> and now you're right back into the thick of it that's yeah. it it's like I never left <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> well, that's what we like cool. yeah, no well doubt. we are glad you're back we're looking forward to the special teams this year and seeing yep. what you can do with them and of course seeing you on the sidelines is always uh, grand and hopefully we'll get to uh, chat more as the season goes on absolutely right on Thanks again to all of the coaches and staff giving us some time to kind of sit down and chat about what's new and what's coming up for them and kind of their excitement as we kind of bring this coaching team together. Uh, it was very exciting to uh, hear everything that they had to say. Uh, we're going to talk more about it as a group uh, this week. Of course, we will have our regular show coming out on Tuesday with Superfan Mike and with Commissioner Kayla. Uh, you can find those guys, uh, uh, Superfan at 56 Parkies and of course, Commissioner at Duchess Lombardi. And you can find me at Free Palicious. Uh, thanks again to the Alberta Podcast Network. Make sure you check out all of the shows there on Alberta Podcast Network. Dot com, And of course, you. Uh, I do want to send a, uh, a shout out to all of our brothers and sisters in the Canadian Football Podcast Network as a whole bunch of shows are starting to come out as we get more news and as we get closer to free agency. So make sure you check all of those out uh, at CF Pod Network on Twitter and you can get all of the information right there. Thanks so much again for checking these out and make sure you are sharing, reviewing and uh, posting so that people can kind of catch up with us. Make sure you're doing the poll as well as we do the depth chart for the Eskimos in this offseason. Very excited as all these things start to come together. We will look forward to talking to you very soon. Uh, Remember, you cannot catch footballs with your face, and we will absolutely talk to you later in the week. And don't forget West of Us. Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter.